DBA. Uh, there's like three Ridleys on the power rankings for that entire like region. So Wait, are you honestly, serious? I, think I didn't Ridley even know that. Is, yeah, uh, there's a lot of Ridleys there. Like I want to say three. Uh, once again, honestly, now even more than ever, I think Player Seven is going to have a lot easier time of narrowing this character. But let's see what Paco is going to be able to do on this one. Uh, the little side B snatch, as I like to call it. The Space Pirate Rush, as I've learned that is called on Ridley, uh, is very interesting and can KO very early, but I just feel like Game & Watch naturally just kind of runs around you and then hopefully you kind of get your hits in. Yeah, yeah. Must say, it tilts me to my soul to hear the roost of all songs on Battlefield of the stage <laughs> right now. Where This is just giving me actual PTSD. We could choose any song in the game. This is what we're going with, but that's a rant for another time. And I agree. I, I feel like Ridley in like his punish game is a little less um a little less linear than Ike is. And I do mean only a little less linear, because Ridley's punish game, you know, he gets in there, he lands forward air strings. We all know what it is. He's got some pretty good offstage presence with his multiple jumps. Woo! As that back air is gonna take the stock. But I feel like, you know, as far as like the parry game goes, it's just getting uppies out of shield. I feel like Ridley is just gonna have a slightly easier time than Ike, albeit, you know, maybe with less disjoints and more of a uh, bigger hitbox. Yeah, for sure. I can definitely see how that is 100% possible. But once again, Player 7, I think it's very interesting. They opted to throw themselves back into the corner on that recovery rather than just going back into center stage. Also going to be able to get the back air into, of course, the F-tilt. Let's see what the option is going to be here because honestly, I'm just very surprised right now. Player 7 is just not giving Paco a chance to land and really, Ridley, how do you land versus this? Just a bunch of up airs right into the head and I can't help but to wonder Nintunis if Battlefield was the right place to go on this one. Yeah, getting juggled on this stage can definitely be a hard spot, especially against characters with as a good of aerials and punish game as Game & Watch has. As the up air call out, just raw. Gonna take the stock right there. Good stuff. Dude. That's Hopefully we can see some more stuff like that if the neutral is gonna be heavily in the favor of player seven. But yeah, these platforms can make your landings just that much linear, and especially against a character like Game & Watch when you're a big body on the way down. I gotta agree. Questionable pick. All right, here we go. Looking for anything. Going to be able to find at least a down tilt. Can't find much else off of it. Player 7, though, very comfortable right now at the 30%. It's just that Paco's jumps are being met with an option every single time he tries to jump and start an aerial. And now Ridley just trying to land at this point. But once again, the narrow juggles are just all pain. Here comes the neutral B to try and prop Paco up, but it doesn't even seem to matter. The back air just brutal and Paco trying to find a backer of their own nothing home yet nothing home yet for sure that down tilt though can reach under this under the stage a little bit it's not the biggest hitbox in the world but it's not too tiny either but game and watch though from the other side of the stage is definitely going to have an easier time getting around that than you might think I think this matchup definitely showing that game and watch is favored in it right now especially on a stage like this the survivability is cleanly on his factor very delayed reaction on the part of Paco as well, trying to go for that up smash, which Ridley's up smash is huge. It's really good at covering platforms, but if you're just going to be whipping it willy-nilly like that after Game & Watch has already gotten above you and regained stage control, it's going to be rough. And you see him going for his ranged options by oh the ledge God. as well, like F-tilt and everything. And Player 7 is just quite literally playing around all of it. Yeah, looking good right now for Player 7. Up air would have definitely taken it, but I'm sure Paco is very content with the back air as well. Almost... 200% on Paco. Now, Ridley's a heavy, but he's actually one of the lighter heavies according to some of the Ridley mains. So, 207, 228, still not dead. I'm, uh, now I'm eating my words at this point because honestly, I haven't seen a Ridley live to 250 in super long. And now, player seven just needs to find something. Downer, yes. No, no red sparks, no nothing. You're dead. Game didn't think Next that was gonna kill. <laughs> <laughs> but the game is just like not nah, that with this move is not supposed to do that you're but you know you're at 250 percent as he got to 250 percent by getting hit by the uh the bacon bits right there out of the pan obviously those moves do not do nearly enough knockback or hit stun to really kill so it's just a constant barrage of just damage increasing on you and when you're a big 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 hurt box like Ridley trying to make your way back up from the ledge. Game & Watch is going to give you a horrible time on the way back, for sure. So the, I'm not surprised to see Ridley actually live up to that high percent, even though the Ridley mains do say he is one of the lighter heavies, as he is. But sticking tried and true with him is Paco. 
Town and City is the pick. I definitely like switching away from Battlefield, but I'm not too sure if it's too little or too late for the matchup. We're just going to have to see how Paco's adapted. Yeah, for sure. Once again, I don't feel like Town and City essentially solves anything in terms of the Game & Watch gameplay, but it does give Paco a couple more options off the side that I can definitely get behind, right? The Space Pirate Rush, the Side B, may actually KO a little bit early, especially on a stage like Town & City off the smaller sides. Here it is. Not going to be able to take it. Unfortunately, not enough rage on the Ridley. Looking for the backer, going to be able to find the second one, and already Paco looking so much better has stabilized so well yeah i gotta say you know i'm not sure how much i agree with the terms of it affecting the matchup because at the very least i can imagine i mean he's gonna get juggled no matter what he's a big body you know i would say maybe on like a stage like fd which i imagine that player seven probably has been banning would uh would ridley be able to work around that a lot easier and make his landings like a lot less linear as he tries two times for the forward smash right there but here, I feel like he'll be able to get down a lot easier. He's going to live off of the top because he's a little bit heavier, so he doesn't have to worry about Game & Watch up smash killing as much. Though Game & Watch being the lighter character that he is, that might benefit him just a little bit more, as the down air is going to take the stock. But as we saw earlier, Space Pirate Rush, that's one of uh, Ridley's main ways to kill. And those uh, side horizontal blast zones, a lot tinier than the top ones. Player 7, though, fighting their way right back in. Percentages are now a little bit even, even turning toward Player 7's point. Honestly, Paco just can't land at this point, going for the Space Pirate Rush on the side B. But, of course, you know Player 7. You know all they need is just that up at a shield just to kind of maintain ground again. The Bacon actually stops all of the hits of Mare here. And now, once again, Player 7 able to stabilize. Oh my god, say that five times fast. Uh, fair, not going to be able to do it, but down air just will. In the Keyblade for sure. He ate like five up airs to tack on the damage that he did on Paco, making me eat my words as far as Game & Watch juggling. Just too good of a juggle tool in and of itself. Oh, actually just misspacing his bacon bits a little bit right there. Paco able to roll past it, even timing it right and getting an up smash for his troubles as well. That's another huge BB hitbox that this character has off the top for sure. It's definitely an amazing move at catching landings with or without platforms for sure. Paco looking like he was down, but not out completely. The town and city pick working out a lot better for him in this game number two, Lyric. Yeah, completely agree. But now Paco just... Honestly, it's just all about how do you stop the bleeding as fast as possible? Do you think Game & Watch has a more consistent damage output than Ridley does? Great parry though on player seven, just looking for the falling fair. Not gonna be able to find the down smash. And once again, it's just how do you leave this corner? It's so difficult. I mean, you're jumping around, you're still getting hit by Game & Watch up there. The dash attack comes in. Oh, okay, the sea turtle not gonna be able to do anything. Looking a little bit iffy on the ledge. I don't even know what move that was. I want to say it's F-Tilt, but it just looked like Game & Watch was floating in the air. My... that whole interaction made me drop my jaw. I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, that's why I kind of stayed silent for a second there. Everything about that was so unfortunate on the part of Paco right there. You see Game & Watch going deep for that back there as he is one to do, considering how amazing his recovery is. Beating out the Wing Skewer right there at the beginning which forces Ridley to drop and use it from below again, which it can, that, which by the way, as you all know, that move can only go at four angles. It's not like, you know, Firefox or like Wolf Uppy or anything like that, where you could just change it into like eight different angles or whatever, or potentially even more. No, Sakurai thought that would be too broken on Ridley for whatever reason, and now he can only go at four angles, forcing him lower, and then just completely beating out the Space Pirate Rush on top of that. That was three instances in a row, Lyric, where Game & Watch's moves just straight up beat out Ridley's. Oh my god, so close to unfortunately SDing there by player 7. This is the first time they are going to be able to land at this point though. Once again, the uppies out of shield just saying no to any of the combos that Paco wants. Gonna be able to find the side view there, looking really good. Paco, first time up on this entire, entire, uh, set here and now player seven once again just gonna opt to go for some of the up airs down smash gonna send at the angle doesn't bury and uh speaking of angles i didn't like that one 
No, I didn't like that one either, and frankly, I don't think the people below in the town and city did below. Like, I think it would probably be pretty scary just to have a dragon just nosedive in the middle of your day like that. But sometimes when you only have four angles on your uppie, that's just what's gonna happen, unfortunately. He just wasn't able to hold forward in time in the right spot, though that definitely was a misinput on Paco's part, to say the least. As the bombardment on the part of Game & Watch gonna do it right there, barely killing the Ridley, the platform gonna come in, not clutch for him. Forward smash not going to do it right there, a little too tiny, but hitting the bomb to make sure it doesn't get him off of the top. Beautiful survivability on the part of Paco right now, if it's not too little too late, Lyric. Yeah, definitely not looking Finally for anything, for though. F yeah, honestly, I, I feel like the Ridley F smash is actually very, like, spammable, to, like, say the least. There's definitely some very interesting options here, but, of course, just Pac- or I almost said Pac-Man. Mr. Game & Watch out there. Oh, my God. It's Get a little bit long for me, but once again, <laughs> yeah, the retro seven characters just... confused. I don't blame you. Honestly, they look exactly alike. Just kidding. Exactly um, but alike. 181 on Paco here. Once again, here it comes the up throw. Can't find anything else. Yeah, that one's gonna KO for sure. Absolutely, they're off the top right there, going to do it. Yeah, there you go with that F smash again. It's kind of have that, it has that Mario factor as well. Not even just because it's like, oh, it's got the fire property because it looks like one or whatever. No, it's because it's insanely strong and because it also has that step back that really can sort of use as an effective spot dodge as that up smash is going to take the stock right there. Speaking of Mario, good stuff to them on that part. And we did only see Ridley go for like, we're not seeing Ridley go for too many like wing skewers by the ledge. One thing that Ridley players really love to do is they love to do downward angle wing skewer because that hitbox is gigantic on that move. I'm pretty sure that's why Sakurai only gave it four angles, because he probably thought it would be too broken otherwise, just whatever their logic was. But that move's amazing at spiking if you do it down for an angle. But Game & Watch with the invincible startup up me that he has, you don't see Ridley going for that too much, which is another reason why I feel like this matchup is probably Game & Watch favorite, because that's just another thing that Game & Watch can occasionally just take away from Ridley. Yep, for sure. Here we go, though. Paco just trying to find their way back in. Going to be able to find the Nair back here on this point. Going for the Space Pirate Rush, but going up super high on the side as well. This is player seven's game to lose. Honestly, it may be a 3-0. Going to be able to get the re-grab here. Another throw. I love how he's at least wave landing on the platform saying, you know what, I'm ready for it. That's the first time we've actually seen the up smash coming out from player seven as well. I feel like they prefer a lot more of Game & Watch's aerials and the smash attacks. So... Again, yeah. looking for something. F tilts are going to collide. No F smash there from Paco, but looking really, really grim right now. Yeah, we saw that up smash coming out because he only threw out one bacon bit to sort of try to bait him into Aww. rolling, but it didn't work, and neither did the tech at too high a percent for Paco to be able to do that. That is player seven with a clean 3-0. That is going to do it for them right there. Unfortunate stuff on the part of Paco. But hey, it's going to have a second chance down in the loser's bracket later on as we're going to get the clean 3-0 from Player 7, who specifically always uses the seventh port when he plays a Player Smash. Is the only logic I can come to by the tag being what it is. But uh, yeah, 